everybody and welcome to this video where I am going to go over the things that people had either questions about or complained about in the video that was entitled, I don't know, something about me being a writer in LA video will be in this area now. All right, a couple things. I am trying to not enable bad behavior, okay? So, if you noticed, I stopped doing those reading the comments videos because I was getting a lot of dumb fucking comments that were kind of shitty, I think, because people knew I was making videos reading their comments. So, I stopped doing that. I got some emails about the video I did, and in the video where I was walking to get some Thai food, talking about some of the responses I got, which I will now put up here as well, different video. I said that I was getting emails, but not as many comments as I thought that that video would get. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that people are comfortable talking shit when they're not gonna get called out. So I don't want to enable that kind of behavior, but off of the comments, the emails, honestly, off of the shorts and Instagram reels I've been making off of that video, some of the comments that I got that I think I need to just address. A few things. This question was asked a few different ways, but I took the essence of these questions and put them into this one. Because apparently some people felt I was being disingenuous by doing a author tube writing tip channel on how to do stuff when I do all this other shit and I don't really talk about that stuff. So it's like, how do you call yourself a working writer when you do all that other shit? That is the thing of it. Well, I call myself a working writer because I'm a working writer. I don't know, like figure it out. Um, the reason, okay, well let me do this one too because it kind of is intertwined. Um, why do you make vids about writing when you do all that other shit. So I don't know if this was as much, why do you make vids about writing when you do all that other shit? Or why don't you make more vids about all that other shit? Because, um, I don't know, not everyone's super articulate. So the reason why I don't make as many vids or videos as we call them in the industry here about that other stuff is because the other stuff isn't fun. In order for me to want to keep making videos on YouTube, I have to enjoy what I'm doing. I have to be having a good time. The second this doesn't become fun, I bounce. And for those of you who have been a follower of this channel for years and years and years, you have known that there have been times where like I'm posting every day and then all of a sudden I just won't post for a month and a half. And it's because like I need breaks when I'm doing shit that I'm not like in love with, if that makes sense. Like I don't like doing shit that I don't like doing. So I bounce when I'm not into stuff. So I focus this channel on doing the things that I enjoy doing. And if I could share that stuff with you and you guys are inspired or whatever to do your own thing, then that's awesome. But if you have specific questions about how to do certain things, I can make content about those things, but I'm not gonna do that all the fucking time because I don't like it. Nobody likes it, okay? So in order for me to keep doing this and keeping it fun, I need to do stuff that I like to do even if it is helping you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like the stuff that I do that helps you guys, I still have to enjoy or else I'm not gonna fucking do this. There were a couple other questions that are gonna get threaded into the other stuff I'm gonna talk about here. One of the things was people getting confused, and I've talked about this so many fucking times, but if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen me talk about this yet, let me help you. So people like go, oh, you wrote that movie Nights to Badass Dumb whatever, or whatever it is, and I, no, I didn't. 
that's not me. There are a lot of Matt Walls in the world because that's a generic as fuck name. So um, there are quite a few of us out there. I'm the better one. For those of you who are wanting to look up the film career I had, um, you would need to Google the stage name I was using during that time, which was Creep Creeperson. Okay, the very real sounding name, Creep Creeperson. Now, you might not believe this, but I was the only Creep Creeperson. Okay, out of a sea of Matt Walls, I was the only Creep Creeperson. So you could Google me, you could look me up on Wikipedia, you could look me up on IMDb. Okay, if you want to see all the stuff that I did. If you want to see all the stuff, like the music stuff that I did, uh, you could look up Creeperson. That was the band. Um, but like some of that will probably come up looking up Creep Creeperson anyway. Um, and then I do solo stuff under Matt Wall as well. Okay. There were some questions about how to make money from music besides like getting the pittance you get from Spotify and stuff like that. I don't know how this works anymore. Okay. But back in the late aughts, um, I had a lot of my music published through ASCAP. And ASCAP is like a, I don't even know if it exists anymore. I'm sure it does. It's like an artist rights thing that keeps track of royalties and stuff like that. And I had a song that was like the theme song for a travel channel show. I think in it was either 2006 or 2007, I got checks from that that were way better than the money you make from fucking uh, royalties on Spotify or getting seconds of a song played on TikTok or something like that. And I would get like the statements and the statements would come in and it would show every time the song played on an episode, like what the episode number was, how long the song played. Um, and then I think it even said something else like, uh, like what was the use of the song and the thing? I can't remember exactly what it did, but I used to get these breakdowns. I used to get like, I mean, they weren't like huge checks, but I got decent checks for that. So that is one thing to do um, if you are a songwriter or something like that and you want to know how to... And like I didn't try to get the song picked up. Like um, I don't know, like the producers found the song. I, I've no, I have no idea how it happened actually. I just started getting checks one day and I was happy. And then my mom realized that I was serious when she was in a grocery store and heard a song of mine on the radio. I have no idea how this even happened because, um, like, if I did get any, like, radio play, it lasted for a half a uh, pubic hair. Like, it was, like, a very, very short amount of time. But um, if it wasn't for that, like my family would completely think I was a joke right now. So that was like the thing that made at least Christmas and other holidays not so horrendous, if that makes sense. Making movies, like, and being a writer, like you don't have to make movies to make money in the film business. There are plenty of people who write scripts um, I've written scripts for other people. Um, there's a lot of uh, like treatment writing and outline writing. And if you are unfamiliar with what this looks like and you're interested in doing something like this, I'm sure if you like Googled how to write a film treatment or how to write a film outline or something like that, you would get like tons of really useful info. But it's basically, and I'm not trying to like talk shit on people who do this for a living, but it's seriously the most like base level, basic fucking type of writing that you can do. Like if you wanna be a writer because you have like really great ideas, 
but your writing is not good, like you don't think you're a very talented writer, write treatments. And all the treatment is, is basically like a page or two of what the beginning, middle, and end of your idea. And you can sell those to people making movies. It's ridiculous. It's seriously like, it's a really easy, quick way to get your foot in the door at a place and also just to make a few bucks here and there. Because then if the thing happens, typically every time there's a rewrite or something like that, depending on what your contract says or whatever, you either get um, another payment or you have some say, and this isn't all the time at all. Sometimes you don't get shit, but um, sometimes you could have it set up to where you get some say and rewrites. And then also you can do something like here, like buy this treatment or let's make this movie. When you get the funding for it, you'll pay me to write the script that I probably already wrote kind of thing and get like a few grand here and there doing shit like that. So that is how writing films you can make a living doing that. And honestly, being in Hollywood out here, it's really easy to be in situations where that will happen, but you have to like to schmooze. You have to like to go out, meet people, figure out who's working on what, constantly like, oh, what are you working on? Who, who are you working with? You meet a, somebody here, you meet a waiter here, they're probably an actor, they're probably a producer, they've probably been putting something together. Oh, what are you working on? And you do all that shit. Here's my information, here's your information. <clears throat> you have to really like that life, constantly. But the, the cool thing about that is, is that you could then write off every lunch you ever have in your life. Because if you talk to one person about work, like, oh, this is a write-off. Like, there's a lot of tax write-offs out here, guys. Okay, another thing we didn't talk about when we were talking about ebooks and stuff like that is front matter and back matter. And we have talked about this in the past. In the future, I'm going to make specific videos about front matter and back matter and the purpose of it. Um, but it's basically when someone goes on Amazon and they are looking at an ebook and they could do the preview, you need to choose what's in that preview very, very, very carefully because you could end up getting like lifelong fans based off of like promise and following through with promises based on what people see in a preview. Okay. So um, that'll be the tease for that, I guess. SEO, I had a question about like me explaining how to use SEO for your um, websites and like for like YouTube videos, like metadata and stuff like that. And honestly, I'm, I don't think I'm that good at telling you what, especially with YouTube, what your SEO, what your metadata um, and all that should be. I would say the best way to do that is if you're making a video about a certain topic, try to find a video that's trending right now and use the formula that they use their title. And you, like, so like, let's say it's like um, how to get a, 20 pound goldfish in three days okay like that was like a trending video that popped up and you're like wow that's a great title it made me click on it but i don't care about goldfish i have nothing to do with goldfish and on my channel we talk about writing so instead of saying how to make a 20 pound goldfish in three days say how to write your first short story in three days boom there you go so take what's working on youtube and Use that for your niche, 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 Nietzsche. Okay, figure it out and do that. As far as search engine optimization goes, like if you don't have your own website, it doesn't fucking matter. If you have any other questions for me, just grow a pair and leave them in the comments and don't be a dick when you're asking it 
and then everything will be fine and we'll just have a normal fucking conversation, okay? Other than that, let me know if you have any questions um, and I wanna thank all the new members that have been coming in to the channel lately. I appreciate you. Make sure you um, join the crew on any level just so you could be um, on the Monday through Friday live streams I've been doing and extra, extra. It's out now. Well, of course it's out now. It's been out for a while. But this is only a dollar on my Etsy shop. And if you don't know how to get to my Etsy shop, I'll put a link in the description below this. If you go to um, IHateMountWall.com, there is a like four or five blocks on the top right, okay? The one that says E, that's the Etsy link. Click on that. Or click on any of the images that also have chat books on them. Whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. I, I was told that it was hard to find my Etsy shop. So click on those fucking things. Okay? So type hard and I will talk to you all later.